By this time, the burden was so gripping my heart that I felt that it would break. As the cries of anguish that came from all around me, faces staring at me, even haunt me now, even as, as I speak to you. Then the form of a woman sitting alone captured my attention as she seemed to be sitting in a grotesque manner, her head strangely twisted backward. She would try to turn it back right, but it seemed to be locked in that unnatural way. This is Mrs. Lott. Do you recognize her? Said my guide. I had already known that it was she as the scriptures came to me. I had remembered how the angels by force had taken Lot and his wife and his daughters from the doomed city of Sodom with warning that they were not to look back. But the attraction of Sodom was so great and so influenced the life of, of Lot's wife that she could not resist just one last look. And the Bible said she became a pillar of salt. Sometimes, my friend, it only takes one look back to lose all and to be lost without God. On down through the train, we went and seated just a few seats beyond. Saul was a very impressive-looking man, dressed in rich apparel with many rings upon his hands, and about his neck a golden chain which bore the royal imprint of the official seal of a kingdom. On his head was a crown, and in his hand a golden cup stained with wine. But as in his eyes there was a terrible look of fear, as if only now he was realizing what he had done where he was and where he was going, Belshazzar, these words formed on my lips. Then the scriptures came back to me how this man Belshazzar, the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, had dared to take the holy vessels that his father had taken from the temple at Jerusalem and was using them at his wild party to drink from. But suddenly a deathly stillness had fallen over the banquet hall as the hand of a man was seen writing on the wall. The king's knees spoke together in fear as Daniel was brought in to read the words of doom, which was the judgment of God. Thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. He looked at me with pleading eyes and said, Can they do this to the son of a king? I'm Belshazzar, the son of a king. And I remembered the word of God that said, Every knee shall bow. Whether we be kings or peasants, we have a day of meeting with our sins. Never did the thought of God's awful judgment come to Belshazzar as he made Mary lived his sin-laden life, desecrated that which was holy, but he found out that God will bring into judgment those who break his holy laws. Hear it, my friend. The world is now in such a state when it has no regard for holy things. God's name is used in blasphemy. Old-fashioned gospel preachers ridiculed and called fanatic. But there is a handwriting even now, your record and mine, and I pray, God, that it will not be the message this pitiful man had heard. Thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. Come, said my guide, there are others for you to see. I followed him, my burden becoming, becoming even greater. Then the most awful-looking creature I saw during the entire vision was a woman seated with a man. Her face was painted and the paint had smeared all over her face. The thing that struck me as strange was the colors. Her lips were a deep purple, and under her eyes it was green. Then I'd remember that, read in history, how the Egyptian women had used all different colors and dyes for their faces to make up. But the most awful thing was not how she looked, but what she was doing and saying. Such blasphemous words I have never heard. She was shouting and screaming and pounding on the little man, or at least he seemed to be a small man, and he kept jerking at the change that bound them both together. Surely I thought, this is Jezebel and Ahab. These had been the tormentors of the people of God. This pagan queen had torn down the worship of the true God in the land. This woman John spoke of in the Revelation and called her that wicked woman Jezebel. Her husband Ahab had hated the prophets of God because they told him the truth. But the day, my friend, of awful truth had come for them, just as it will come for every man that rejects God's message of love. In life, Jehu had ordered, in life, Jehu had ordered her thrown down from a balcony where she stood with her face painted. 
Jehu ordered her to be thrown to a pack of hungry dogs beneath the balcony. And they consumed her body until there was nothing left, the Bible said, but the skull, the feet, and the palms of her hands. Someone has said those hands were so touched with corruption that even hungry dogs would not eat them. The word of God came to me in Revelation that said I gave her space to repent of her fornication, but she would not repent. And I will kill her children with death and all of them to commit fornication with her. All the years of my ministry, I've never forgotten the hate that was in the eyes of this wretched soul. No remorse, no sorrow for wrongs committed. But the terrible truth dawned on me how awful to be cast into outer darkness forever, which is even worse than being associated forever with the filth and the cursing and the screaming of this woman and those that will follow after her. I know you've heard how Jesus died on the cross, but have you really thought about it? Have you really thought about what hell is going to be? You see, I'm praying that you will take each one of these songs directly to your heart. Ask yourself, do you want to go to heaven or to hell? 